Hey there, Shuby Doodlers. How are you doing? I've been sent the latest um, retail version of the Talkbox Elite to play around with and see what it's like. I'm going to show you the whole workflow for a little piece of work to show you how much I use this every day when I'm editing images in Photoshop. And it starts right at the beginning when I'm scanning a piece of artwork and I've sort of got this set up in my scanner, which is right the other side of the room. But all I have to do is press that little button and there we go, it starts scanning on the other side of the room. That's really useful if I'm scanning lots of things and I don't have to keep scooting across the room to keep pressing the scan button. Because the toolbox is Bluetooth, I can have it right across the other side of the room. It's my local scan button. Now let's bring this into Photoshop. The toolbox has lots of these little buttons on the top and this little wheel here, you can see I can zoom in and out. Uh, and by doing that, I can move that over so you, so you can see what I'm doing. Now I want to erase that there. So I'll click the erase button and it's as simple as that. When I come to color in my black and white drawings, I have a recorded action, which I click and it, which introduces three new layers. So what I've done is I've mapped that to function 19 and I've mapped function 19 to this little button on the side here, which I'm going to press and um, watch over here on the layers. I'm going to press it now. And there, <laughs> immediately, <laughs> are all my actions. I got a whole lot of new uh, layers. And in fact, this top one, I don't want multiply. I keep meaning to change that. Um, so I got white layer top, a black layer, which is multiply, set to multiply. The original layer is now set to multiply. And the base color is set to multiply in case I want to put another layer down below. So in my base color layer, I can now choose uh, to paint. So I'm gonna choose a brush. And I'm going to need to choose a color. I'm going to have a kind of a teal blue for this um, jacket here. And I'm going to just be fairly crude with this. And and if I want to turn it at an angle, look, I just spin it around like that, which <laughs> which is so cool. And I just sort of start coloring it in there. I want to make the brush smaller, so I just give that central dial a bit of a spin and that reduces the size. I can make it bigger and smaller, just just so easily, just with a little uh, action on that central dial. And then I, I want the picture straight again, press that and we flick back to uh, where we were. And I want to do the same on this side, so uh, maybe I'll spin it around that way. And again, I want to have a smaller brush just to fit in there and just to fit in there and flip that round. So what I've actually got going on here is the original image is staying uh, original. So I can, if you click that off there and because it's in multiply, it's um, white basically becomes transparent and you see what's underneath it and co coloring on the channel down below. So we're still in brush and I need to have um, kind of a face color so I'm now going to put in there so I have a slightly larger um, smaller so I'm just you know changing the brush size as I'm going along a little bit underneath there uh, you know if you just paint with a small brush you can be there all day I need to delete some there in the eyes which went over the edge I'm giving them kind of orangey hair uh, what's going on there that, I'm still in erase I need to click there to be in paint and I'm just going to sort of paint in the block of it there like that and change to um, something a bit more flicky and I think I'm going to have something similar for the t-shirt, I think. So we'll come in there and get that get in there nice and tight with this sort of sharp pointy brush. And uh, click this little button here to erase that last, <laughs> the last bit that I did. And if I, so I can click back through the various steps I've done to erase those and then sort of put them all back again with that brush. You can map the toolbox um, to all kind of actions that you use a lot. And and so <laughs> this is kind of, these are the actions that I use most and I've got the toolbox completely mapped um, to my favorite actions. And these are things that I just use every day. And I'm sure 
um, you probably do completely different things on Photoshop or or any other creative program uh, and you can map all sorts of things to it. Let me just show you a quick thing with Word, for instance. And so we've got it. Quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog, but I need my thesaurus to come up with a different word. So I click that and up pops, pops my dictionary because I've, I've set it to a macro to open up another program um, and come to the page that I want. So if I put in dog, <laughs> we can come up with canine. OK, let's do that over the lazy canine. And again, it's click and, and I've set another one up for the dictionary to take me back to Word. So this is a really, really useful um, little thing, which otherwise I'd be clicking all over the place trying to find out how to get back to the dictionary. Or It's there and I know this now. And really, it's all about muscle memory, I think. When you first use it, it's, oh, you can't remember. And let me undo that and go slightly smaller. Um, so when you first start using this, you have to keep going back and checking. What was that? What was that for? And literally within a day or something, you you think, how did I ever live without this before? And and your muscles just get used to it. The muscle memory just remembers what's going on. It's uh, it's amazing like that. So let me go to something that's a bit more kind of bluey. Grey, like that, so which we'll put in on the colours, kind of ribbing rather. Uh, I'm going to want something small in there, a little bit in there, and then underneath here too. And um, back to erase, I'll just get rid of those little bits that have gone over the top. It's just these tiny microseconds that you're saving. And then we'll have something sort of paler blue jeans around there, and then we can increase the size of the brush um, we need to get a bit thinner to fit in there again and yeah i don't know if you can hear it but you, you've got these sort of haptics as well so when you there's a sort of a clicky noise it's the noise has changed actually the previous one was quite sort of tick 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 this is now not, 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 not. it's an upgraded um, software for it. So maybe that it's in that and they kind of maybe people were complaining about it being too ticky before. And, and also you can hear that is making a ticky. And it's not just um, not just a noise. You actually feel it. So there's a physical response while you're spinning and scrolling. It's um, very satisfying. Now I'm going to go to the soft round here and get a very pale blue. I'm just going to put a little bit of, oh, maybe that's too much. Um, so I'm going to delete that. And, oh, that's maybe too much. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to delete, delete. See, it's nice and quick deleting. And really, I want to make that much paler like that. And then I'll just get a bit of that in there. I have a little bit in there. And then I come up to this black layer, which is already set um, at 21%. So it's going to be transparent. And I want to change this to black. And I've got this top one here set to swap these colours over here. But if I click them quickly, it changes to black and white as well. So there are all these little things that you can do. So I'm going to want some shadow underneath here. So I'm painting in black, but it's transparent black, which is like 21% uh, transparency. And and then, oh, yeah, we got that. And then I'm going to add some in here as well. So this is sort of adding a little bit of shade underneath the hair as well. I'm just going to kind of shade down the ears a bit as well. Maybe a little blodge under the nose. Maybe a little bit of shade under the ch lip. Um, and I think we can have some kind of shade going on in here. Like that. And, and probably down in the t-shirt jumper, whatever it is. And um, we're going to want some sort of shade underneath there as well. I think a bit like that. Maybe there. And... And we'll probably have some uh, sort of shade going on in there and maybe underneath there. So this is very, very simple shading and colouring. And, and I might just 
add an extra layer in here and this is going to need to be multiplied as well and, and I'm going to change that to a very subtle pink and maybe just a little bit of <laughs> something there like that and I get a tiny little bit on the bottom lip uh, go back to the black layer and erase that like that and I think I might just get rid of that little uh, original layer okay. uh, we want to paint this in black and white so I'll swap the black forward and background colors <laughs> and remember we're it needing a brush and not an eraser and we want to be <laughs> swapping the colors again there we go and there we are that's a very simple little illustration we could just add a little bit of white up in the top for a bit of highlight as well like that and yeah maybe a bit of kind of highlight on the that's maybe going over the top but anyway so there we go that's how i use the toolbox to help me really speed through these little illustrations uh coloring them in so that's how i use the toolbox to kind of speed through uh, illustrating those little black and white drawings in colour. And I truly am very, very happy to to promote this and, and say how much I like it. I use this every day, all the time, and it's become such a second nature. I almost forget that it's there. I'm just using it. <laughs> it's what my left hand is for. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Go and get one for yourself. You'll find all the links down below. And um, in the meantime, keep drawing, 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 tall boxing, tall boxing, tall boxing. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye.